Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Eric Chemi. Today we're joined by Nick Cullis, Chief Market Strategist at Convergix. Nick, thanks for coming on here. The main issue that we're seeing a lot in the markets is what is the effect of DC on the markets? And I know this has been going on since the election, since the inauguration, it just never ends. But in particular this week, it feels like that story has started to really take on a lot of steam here. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I think we can look at yesterday's price action as basically a warning shot across DC's bow from Wall Street saying, okay, we didn't care, but now things are getting a little bit serious and now we're beginning to care. So yesterday was not a bad sell-off. It was not like the panic days of 2008, very orderly, low correlation sell-off, but it is Wall Street's way of saying, enough already, let's get back to business. So the other thing that I always wonder about is just being a New York City biased guy, personally, I'm not that interested in stories from DC, because as we know, it's a lot of talk, it takes a lot of effort to actually get a rule change to actually make something happen. So you just get a lot of noise in the news. And so when I see the markets and I just said, let's pretend I didn't read the newspaper and all I saw were the charts, maybe the market was due for a slight pullback anyway, regardless of the news. What do you think about that? It's very true. When you look at volatility, both actual volatility and the volatility is expressed through the VIX, you come to the same conclusion. We were stumbling along at historically low levels of actual volatility and a 10, 11 handle VIX, which is very, very rare, less than 1% of the time over the last 30 years. So you're right. We were stumbling along with low vol and then something caught our attention yesterday and we sold off. But it could have been a lot of different things. We were pri really primed for this kind of move down. And so when I think about, like you're saying, low vol right now, we're at, you know, 10s, 11s, really small numbers. What is the downside to just buying a bunch of options, right? And just saying, look, vol's got to go up. It can't get any lower. Is that really, when you talk to people in the markets, is that kind of a strategy that a lot of people are using here? No, I'll tell you, a lot of the vol traders have basically given up because they've tried that over and over and over again for the last year and invariably gotten crushed because premium just continued to decline. And that's because volatility acts in cycles like capital market cycles or business cycles. There are always long periods during expansion when volatility is low. We're in one of those periods now. You know what reminds me, though, is I think about where we were a year ago when we were coming into the election and a lot of market commentators were saying if Trump wins, huge vol is coming, markets are going to go down double digits. And in fact, we get the exact opposite. We got the lowest fall that we've seen in maybe some people's lifetimes here. So it makes you wonder now when the options traders are giving up, maybe this is the exact time to be getting in, right? The moment when they finally say, okay, I've got it wrong. Don't you think that that might be the time to do something like that? It's certainly time to start looking at it. It's classically the time when you'd start doing your research, start doing your work, but you really focus on a catalyst. What will bring the market to your point of view that higher volatility is actually appropriate? That tends to be during periods of either economic slowdowns, a Fed mistake, or a big geopolitical event that raises oil prices. That's been a historical recipe for some kind of incremental volatility, either driven by high oil prices or some kind of financial crisis or a bubble bursting. That's been the recipe. So we've got to look for that in the tea leaves and see if that's coming up. And I know you wrote in your recent note, I think out this morning, talking about some positive cases, some negative cases for how DC outcomes might affect the market. And let's just talk about real quickly, what's the worst case scenario for the markets in terms of what could DC do that really spooks people? You know, it's going to be a little bit more <clears throat> of the same of what we've seen over the past couple of days, particularly with yesterday's sell-off. This kind of churning news cycle about Russia and the FBI and President Trump that begins to suck some confidence out of the market that we will get tax reform in 2018 ahead of the midterm elections. That's the big hinge for equity markets. They want to see that tax plan go through. That's the big downside case is we just get a lot more of the same with no motion in D.C. and no tax bill. And so then how would a trader try to hedge themselves, position themselves for that kind of unpredictable situation? In that environment, I think your case of buying volatility, buying puts, selling calls is the right approach because there you do get a market that churns its way lower with the price action that we saw yesterday. Nothing cataclysmic, but investors begin to lose hope. 
Now, on the flip side, we do have strong earnings and very low interest rates, and that's buttressed the market a lot and a lot of why the volatility has been so low. You'd also have to see a decline in business and consumer confidence commensurate with and alongside that incremental churn of news in D.C. I guess if we're doing this segment again and we're talking about VIX at 7, for example, then we will have known that we got it wrong today, but we'll see what happens. Nick Cullis, thanks for coming on here from Convergix. My thanks to you and my thanks to everybody watching. I'm Eric Chemi. We'll see you next time. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.